Beaumaris is a beautiful town on the Isle of Anglesey, best known for its castle. But Beaumaris has more historical places to visit, like the jail and courthouse. The jail was built in 1829, designed by Joseph Hansom and Edward Welch. The jail was small, being able to hold only a handful of inmates. It was expanded in 1867 to accommodate more inmates, but still only had the capacity for approximately 30 inmates. As you explore the jail today, you would be forgiven for thinking that the prison regime appears harsh, but in its day it was seen as a humane improvement on earlier jails. But despite being seen as humane in its day, the main methods of keeping criminals in check included chains, whippings and isolation in a dark cell for up to three days. The jail today displays the names and crimes of those who were incarcerated here, with the record showing that two hangings took place here. William Griffith was the first to be hung in 1830. His crime was the attempted murder of his first wife. Fearing execution, he barricaded himself inside his cell on the morning of his execution. The door was eventually forced open, and he was half carried and dragged to the gallows. In 1862, Richard Rowlands became the second person to be executed, sentenced to death for murdering his father-in-law. He protested his innocence from the beginning, and right up to the final moment before he was hung. Local legend has it that he cursed the church clock from the gallows, saying that if he were innocent, the four faces of the nearby church clock would never show the same time. Both men were buried in a lime pit within the walls of the jail, but the exact location of their burial is unknown. The metal rivets which held the gallows in place, along with the two doors which the condemned man passed through, can still be seen from the streets outside the jail walls. As in most prisons, escape was always a threat, but the only prisoner to escape from Beaumaris Jail was John Morris. He escaped on the 7th of January 1859 by using a rope he had stolen whilst working with it. He broke his leg while escaping, but made it out of the town before being recaptured. Life inside the jail was very work-focused, aimed to keep the inmates docile. Both men and women were subjected to hard labour, with men having to smash rocks and walk the treadmill. This treadmill is one of the last working penial treadmills in Britain. It is unusual in that it pumped water to the top of the building for use in the cells, meaning that the prisoners were not forced to work for no reason. Women too were forced to work long hours and were made to unpick hemp from ropes. Having a baby would not spare them from the hard labour as a rope passed up through the ceiling and was attached to a crib so that the mother could rock her child while she still worked. The jail eventually became a police station until the 1950s when it became a children's clinic and lastly a museum in 1974. During the Second World War, the town's air raid siren was in the jail and was kept in operation during the Cold War in case of a nuclear attack. The chapel is not original to the building and the pews and pulpit were sourced from a chapel being renovated elsewhere on the island. The numbering of the pews is out of sequence and are not fixed to the floor. Although the jail has long fell out of use, it remains largely unaltered and is now a museum with around 30,000 visiting each year. As I explored, it was apparent of how closely it resembled the workhouse in Southwell.
A stone's throw from the jail is the courthouse, one of the oldest courthouses in Britain, where cases are still heard once a year. The courthouse was originally built in the late 1600s, making it over 400 years old, although alterations were made in the 19th century. Its original character remains the same. Throughout its history, the courthouse has witnessed various cases from petty misdemeanours to murder. In 1768, Hugh Jones stole eight cheeses and a quarter of beef and was sentenced to be publicly whipped in four towns on the island. There was a more serious case in 1910 when William Murphy was sentenced to death for killing his mistress on Christmas Day. He was later hanged at Carnarvon. Though the courthouse is only small, it is interesting to look around and to stand in the dock where so many received their sentence. Both the jail and courthouse are a must visit when in Beaumaris and offer a great insight into the history of justice.